Hello there, this is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC, and I'm back with another video. This is the HP Pavilion TP01 2066 desktop PC, and what's special about this, and the reason I was interested in reviewing it, is it comes with an AMD Ryzen 5700G processor. That's a Saison processor that's an, actually an APU, so it's got integrated graphics, but it's eight cores and 16 threads, and it has essentially the same performance as an AMD Ryzen 7 5800X. It's very, very close, but it does have integrated graphics. And that's important right now since GPUs, discrete GPUs, are extremely difficult to get. And this machine also comes with 16 gigs of memory. It's one stick of RAM, a 256 gig M.2 drive and it also has an optical drive and a decent amount of I.O. ports on the front and on the back. So it's a fairly decent system for the money. When I bought this about a month ago, actually, it was only $550 on sale and they've raised the price a little bit since then, but it's still a pretty good deal. And it's a very good machine, in my opinion, for just everyday usage and light gaming. Here's a quick look at the outside of the system with a 12 ounce beer can for scale. It's a pretty small case. It's the same size as the Walmart gaming PC that I recently reviewed. And a link will be right above here. So the front panel's got a number of USB ports and an SD card reader and a USB-C on the bottom. It also has an optical drive, which hardly anybody uses anymore. You can see the sticker for the Ryzen 7 CPU. On the left side of the case, you've got a bunch of perforations right here that let inlet air go inside. There's no fan behind it, but you could mount one yourself if you really wanted to. Looking at the back of the case, you've got a 92 millimeter exhaust fan at the top, and then the power supply has its own exhaust fan. And you could replace those PCIe slot covers with better ones. And then finally, you've got the information on that sticker right there. This sticker gives you some of the highlights of the specifications of the system, including the processor, the memory, the M.2 drive, the fact that it's got a DVD writer, and also it's got built-in 802.11ac, which is Wi-Fi 5, built-in along with Bluetooth 4.2. So it's a pretty decent all-around desktop system from these specifications. Here's the single T5 torque screw that holds on the left side panel. It's better if you've got a Torx T5 bit like I've got in this iFixit screwdriver, but you could also use a straight blade to be honest. And that's what that iFixit looks like. It's very handy for working on systems. Right above it is where you could use a, a padlock to lock up your side panel. And then here's actually removing that single screw. It's a captive screw, which is good. You won't lose it. And once you take that and loosen it, you can just pull right here and it comes right off and that's the left hand side panel. That's the only panel that comes off on this system by the way. So now you can see what the system looks like in its stock configuration including the CPU cooler and the M.2 drive right there and then the power supply on the bottom. Here's the permanent system information panel on the bottom of the case including information about the Realtek Wi-Fi radio on that right hand sticker. So this is handy to have this info long term. This is what you can easily see on the inside of the system after you get the left hand side panel off. So you can see the M.2 drive there and then you can see the CPU cooler and then the single stick of DDR3200 RAM right there. Next we have the interior black panel that's held on by one Torx 5 screw right there. And once you remove that, this thing comes out pretty easily. And that's the next step if you want to dive deeper into this system as far as disassembling it. Here's another look at the inside of the system after you take off that black panel on the inside of the case. So you can see a pretty small power supply. It's 180 watts, gold plus. And you can see where the optical drive is, and you can actually put an SSD, a two and a half inch SATA SSD, in addition to that. There's cables for it already. And so it's a fairly bare system on the inside, but we'll talk more about it later. This is a close up of the front panel with the brush aluminum look that HP likes to use on these series of PCs for business use. You've got lots of ports on the front, and you're gonna have to pop this off if you wanna go further in the disassembly here. So that'll be the next step coming up. And taking a look after we take that panel off, there's another screw you need to take out so you can get 
the drive cage out where the optical drive is held in and where the SATA drive would go in. You've also got all those ports there. And here's the Wi-Fi antenna coming down that's right underneath that front panel. So it's just a one by one uh, Wi-Fi 5 antenna. So it's going to work pretty well. Here's a close up of the power supply specifications. It's 180 watts, 80 plus gold. So that's good on the efficiency, but the watt rating is a little on the low side. Here's the CPU-Z benchmark result on the absolutely stock system. As you can see, it absolutely smokes a Ryzen 7 3700X 8-core processor. It's nearly 24% higher for single-thread performance and about 16% higher for multi-thread performance. Being in dual-channel mode had virtually no effect on this benchmark, which is not unusual. Just for a quick reference, I ran the same benchmark on a Ryzen 7 5800X system that I have. And there was really not that much difference. The single thread performance is 2.7% higher than the 5700G, and the multi threaded was 5.3% higher. And the reason I think that the multi threaded was a little bit higher is because the L3 cache is twice as large in the 5800X. Let's take a closer look at these two processors. The Ryzen 7 5700G is an APU with integrated graphics, and you can't buy that right now as a DIY thing. It's only available to OEMs. But starting on August 5th, you can go down and buy it at your local micro center or order from Amazon. And the retail price is gonna be $359. And that's a great value. So this thing has a base clock speed of 3.8 gigahertz, a max boost of up to 4.6 gigahertz. It's got 16 megabytes of L3 cache, a 65 watt TDP, and it only supports PCI Express version 3.0, not 4.0. But other than that, it's a Zen 3 core processor. And if we look at the 5800X, it's been around since last November. This thing has a base clock speed of 3.8 gigahertz, so it's the same. The max boost goes up to 4.7, which is 100 megahertz more. It's got twice the L3 cache at 32 megabytes, and it's got a TDP of 105 watts, and it does support PCI Express version 4.0. So that's an advantage in some scenarios, but not for gaming, to be quite honest. And that sells anywhere from $420 to $450, depending on where you buy it. If you go to Micro Center, it's $380 right now. So it's a little bit more money, but it's not really that much faster and it does not have integrated graphics. So that 5700G is really gonna be a nice bargain when it goes on sale on the first week of August. One glaring weakness with this system in the stock configuration is it only has one stick of memory, and that means you're running in single channel mode. And that hurts your performance a lot in most games. It's not that noticeable in day-to-day -day normal usage. It also hurts in certain benchmarks. So Cinebench R20, the stock score is 5170. And then when you put two sticks of memory in here, what I had on hand was two sticks of tighter timing memory, and that puts it in dual channel mode. But unfortunately, it also lowers the speed from 1600 megahertz down to 1066. So I lose a lot of my benefit in this configuration. So I went to 5245. And then we go to Geekbench 5.4. And the single core score is 1493 and the multi-core score is 6654. And we're really being hurt quite a bit on the multi-core score with the stock memory configuration. You really want to have two sticks of memory running in this if at all possible. And when we switch to the modified memory configuration, this is dual channel mode with memory running at only 1066. So the single core score just went up a little bit, 2.3% but the multi-core score went all the way up to 8457, which is 28.6%, and that's even being penalized by running slower. Here's the Vulcan score, which is measuring uh, the APU performance. So the stock memory configuration was 13996, and when we switch out the memory to two sticks of slower memory, it actually jumped up all the way to 16884, and that's a 20.6% increase. And that's something you're going to notice, and that's something you'd notice in games. That's one reason a lot of games have much higher scores when you're in dual channel mode. And then here's the same thing for OpenCL. The stock memory configuration is 13362, 
which is pretty decent for an APU. And when we swap that out and have two sticks of memory in dual channel mode, it switches to 15340. And that ends up being roughly 14.8% uh, increase. And what we're gonna see finally is the A to 64 score. So for the stock system, you can see on the top line, the memory scores, read, write, copy, and latency. And these are quite low. You're being penalized on the read, write, and copy by being in single channel mode. Now the latency is nice and low because you're running at the full 1600 megahertz speed, which is good, you want that. But if you switch the memory like I did to two sticks of tighter timing memory, because of what this HP system is doing, the read, write, and copy bandwidth scores go up quite a bit. They go up roughly 35 to 40%, but the latency also goes up because you're running at the slower 1066 speed. And what you're gonna have to do to fix this is get an identical stick of RAM to what's in the stock system. So here's the most valuable part of this system by far, the CPU or APU, the Ryzen 7 5700G. That thing is gonna be worth about $360. It's actually worth more in the scalping market right now, but don't buy it from scalpers. Here's the stock CPU cooler on the right. It's tiny. Right next to it on the left is an AMD Wraith Stealth, their low-end stock cooler. So this is an inadequate CPU cooler in my opinion, but that's what you get when you buy this system. The only reason you want to buy this system is to get that CPU, to be honest. And then here's the stock M.2 SSD. It's a Kioxia BG4. It's using a lot of OEM systems. So what are my final conclusions about this system? Well, for normal use by somebody who doesn't care that much about performance, it's going to be overkill. It's an 8-core, 16-thread CPU. It's got decent APU performance. And so you can play some games. It's roughly equivalent to a GTX 1030 uh, video card. And the re reason you might want to buy this is a stopgap measure because you can't get a discrete video card for the system you want to build. So you could buy this system and take that CPU out of that socket and put it in a decent motherboard and build a nice system that would hold you over until you can get a discrete video card. And if you don't game and just do normal office applications, you can just use this system the way it is. What I would recommend you do is buy a second stick of RAM, but make sure that it's identical CL22 DDR3200 RAM. So one 16 gig stick would take you up to 32 gigs and that would cost about 80 to 90 dollars and it's pretty easy to find that i'll have a link in the description to one place where you can buy that so that would be my main thing that i would do to this system uh, the ssd is limited to x2 speed by the motherboard so there's no sense in buying a real high-end replacement ssd you can easily add a sata ssd to get more storage space and the integrated graphics work perfectly fine for normal usage. So if that's what you want to do with this system, it's perfectly fine. But the power supply doesn't have enough uh, capacity to support any kind of a decent video card. So that's another thing you want to keep in mind. This is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC, and I want to thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And finally, if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe because that really helps the channel out. Really? You have a lot to say.